All right, hello, hello. We are live now. I, whew, sorry, just ran up the stairs because I, A, I'm really unfit, and B, I was just getting some tea before I began this because uh, I really need it. Ooh. Oh, that's good. That's really, really good. Okay. Um, this thing kind of always scuffs up for some reason um, because... Uh, it's always, always starts up with that because I have to launch Minecraft after the fact or something. So it's kind of, it's kind of lame that way. All right, here we go. All right, booting up the game now. Should not be too long. And, uh, if you're here, say hello, introduce yourself. Let's, uh, let's get the, let's get the chill vibes happening. Logos, good to see you, my man. Um, I hope you enjoyed that, the, de that debate. I, I certainly did. It was very, very fun to watch. Um, lots of good pertinent questions and concepts up. It's, it's very rare to have an actual clash debate clash between, uh, Eastern Orthodox and Protestant views on justification. It's not, it's not a very common occurrence, uh, in my experience. So, mm, sorry. So it was a very good debate to have. Um, oh, for those who don't know, I didn't. I wasn't in the debate. I was moderating it. So, um, yeah, that's just, uh, that's that. Uh, it's taken a little bit to boot up, but, uh, should not be an issue. Indeed. Indeed. The debate was great. Oh yes. And, uh, as you might notice, I have got a little, if you, I don't know if you saw it, but I finally got a little. I've got a little uh, invisible chat box uh, on the right hand side of the screen. Um, so yeah, very good. We'll be able to see live chat for people watching. Alex, mate, how are ya? <laughs> You're here. Alex says that wouldn't be much of a debate. Or for gank. <laughs> become Pentecostal. <laughs> oh man, fun times. Okay, cool. Um, I am seeing on my end of the screen. It looks like the game is live all right yes all right we are here welcome officially everybody to episode two of upon this block uh and to remember the rationale of upon this block we are going into the heathen worlds in minecraft and building great churches very nice and aesthetic churches uh and converting villages to the way of christ um of course <laughs> by nature it's a little bit larpy so i'm gonna try and uh keep that a little bit toned down but uh other than that it is gonna be legit so i'm gonna open up to yep okay cool so i'm over there um i am just gonna briefly share this to announce to the world that we are live so just give me one second there um but yeah guys how are you you gents who are already here how art how art thou days? Oh, I know, I know you, Logos. You're always tired, <laughs> but I guess it's because you're a nice, hardworking, busy man, which I can respect. Um, Alex, my man, how are you? How are you going? It's been been too long, I reckon. Uh, I'll just share this now. As I build churches and convert villages. All right. Bang and. Bang. All right. The stream is shared. Five more. We've got five viewers. Hey, Jeff. How are you? Yo, watching on TV, so won't be commenting. All good. j Powell, mate. How are you? I'm watching this live stream and working on my screenplay assessment. Perfect. 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 Mundos Latinos Basados est. Hic est basados. Hic est basados. Uh, mundos qui est, be, uh, qui est basado, uh, basados uh, uh, est... Uh, Maximus, uh, Ma Maximus, Maximus, <laughs> uh, picking the seeds out of a strawberry plant later because I am based. Okay, pup. Okay, puppy. <laughs> anyway, um, I was going to share it to one more, uh, platform. Actually, nah, that's all sweet. All right, cool. Oh, Logos says, hang on, let me check out my chat. Logos says, uh, solum sum fessus propter quibu quod non edo. Ah, uh, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, I don't know the imperative for eat, so, yeah, whatever. Anyway, let us get, oh, 
Uh, okay, that's not good. Okay, so I I, re I briefly put myself... I've got to exit the game really quickly. Terribly sorry, because I put myself on a different snapshot, which is fully incompatible. So I'm just going back to the other one. I'll just be booting that up. Shouldn't take too long. And uh, yeah, so it should be, should be all sweet. Um, uh, Logos, uh, Quidagis Odie, Quidagis. Logos di Kit, Ede, ah, Ede Imperativus, uh, uh, S, A, S, Logos, Logos, Credo Ede, S, Imperativum. Uh, I think so, maybe. Ah, live chat. I love live chat. Dormio. Ah, dormis. Dormis. Uh, dorm, uh, dormire. Uh, bonum viro. Viro. Out. Uh, weary. Weary. Uh, bonum viri. Dormire. Bonum viri. Uh, Jeremiah Keeper. Hello. I am new to this channel. Where can I find the debate you moderated? BTW. Hi. Ah, yes. Um. You can find that debate on the channel Orthodox Christian Theology. So look that up. Um, it just happened. So I moderated that one. It was very, very good. And uh, it's, yeah, you'll, you'll very much like it. All right, cool. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the evil land of Sodom, Babel, Egypt. We are entering back in to spread the truth and the dominion of God. Ooh, so... The goal for today. Oh, Logos says, Dormir omnio bonus. Sick. Sick. Recte. All right. Awesome. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, and theys. <laughs> just kidding. Just boys and girls. There's only two. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. All right. We are back in the world of Soda Babel Egypt. Uh, tell me if there's any issues of uh, quality or. Uh, lag and all that. There shouldn't be though, because I actually just uh, recently bought a power line adapter for Ethernet. So what I was doing before, I was actually relying on my mobile data. I think I mentioned this and that just got chewed through instantly, which is why the end of the live stream kind of ended abruptly. Um, but now I recently, and I was only using that because the Wi-Fi in my house is literally on the opposite end and it barely reaches here. So I bought an adapter, a power line adapter, which allows me to run Ethernet from the modem through the house's power and into my computer. So I actually have an ethernet cable to my computer and it is simply um, constant, uh, yeah, constant uh, internet and there shouldn't be any uh, any disruptions and all that. So it should be great. Logos di kit ubi sunt feminae hak nocte. Non skio, non skio. Hic est topus? Topos place. Uh, quid is word word uh, place? Uh, I'll just say topos. Uh, Hic est topos virorum. <laughs> anyway, so the goal for today's stream is to get enough resources to uh, at least get a very good frame and a good um, general structure for the church. And my idea for the church is to, and also potentially to begin producing Bibles for the villagers. But, uh, ah, locus, thank you, locus, locus. Hikes locus viorum. Ah, just kidding. Women are welcome too. Women are welcome. Anyway, anyway. Um, so the goal is to get enough resources to begin building this church, um, to at least get a good structure for it, and p potentially also to be, uh, beginning the production of Bibles. So that should be very nice and fun. Um, yeah. So I'm going to be getting right on that. And what I'm thinking of is a Celtic style church. So with cobblestone and Minecraft, uh, triangular shaped roof, um, generally along that. And also somewhere I'll put in like a, a, um, a Celtic style cross. So whether on top of the church or the back of the church, um, somewhere that will exist. Now I'm going to do a resource check. So what have I got? Um, I have got zero stone, at least none here. Alexander says, put a 5G antenna on top of the <laughs> Um, 
first of all, I don't want the people of God uh, developing third arms, Alex. I'm terribly sorry about that. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, J-Pal says, have you heard about the new Super Mario movie? He's got Super Mario movie? No, I haven't heard of that. What the heck? Jeez, well, I hope it's, I hope it's better than the first one. The first one was like hilariously atrocious. <laughs> So I hope it's, I mean, I don't know why would you even do that? Like, it's just a video game thing. I don't get, I don't know. But I mean, who knows? Maybe they can make something good out of it. Um, anyway, Big Nick, Mr. Hey, Big Nick, how are you? Glad, glad to see you here now. Glad to see you here. Um, so I believe there's the, yeah, it does uh, look like the live chat is working. You know, I'm going to, give me one second. I'm just going to move the live chat window a little bit up here so that messages are more centric. Yeah, good enough. All right, awesome. So, um, I'm going to look for a suitable place to construct a mine. Um, I just want to be able to go to a consistent mine that I can easily find and uh, just get everything I need out of it. So, this cave might be a decent entry point. Whoops. Close my live chat because I'm watching this on my Because I also have this on my phone next to me so I can see what's happening. See on the chat, that is. Uh... Big Nick says, Chris Pratt is supposed to play Mario in the new movie. What the heck? I, are you guys pranking me or something? That is just... That is weird. That is really, really weird. But... I've, okay, I guess I'm going to have to look this up afterwards. I'm going to have to fact check you all. <laughs> oh, man. I need to stop laughing so much at literally everything. Okay. Um. Yep. Yeah, cool. Difficult. Oh, God. That's a skeleton. Just started. Calm down, Paul. Calm down. Okay. Uh, naturally, he is an Italian plumber after all. No, it's real. Chris Pratt is voicing Mario. Jack Black is Bowser. Oh, so is this like an animated movie or a live action? I think it sounds animated by what you're saying. Um, you know, it might be wiser for me to find iron before I come in here because I'm going to need a shield because skeletons in Minecraft. Um, I still remember... Somewhere either shortly after full release or just before full release, skeletons were made ridiculously accurate. Um, yeah, so that kind of changed everything. You're not able to just as easily run around them anymore and they just miss. Uh, j Powell says, yes, yeah, an animated movie. Okay, okay. Uh, Jeff says, kids tell me it's animated. First, everyone knows this but me. Well, except Jeff, but even his kids knew. What the heck? Okay, that's interesting. Very interesting. Um... Anyway, I'm going to look for iron first. I'm going to find a suitable place for iron, or at least to extract iron, because I need that to be able to go into the caves. Although, then again, I could just start getting... I'm just going to get some cobble right now. I'll start off with that. Because that is the uh, fundamental structure of this church. Alexander says, Skeleton's arrows are guided by God, inshallah. <laughs> I mean, I guess if they're a means of God's wrath... Um, that, that may well be the case. Um, uh, I don't get why every, hang on, why is everybody's names purple? I really don't get that. Properties. Uh, background color theme. Text color. Chatter. Source. Visual settings seem clean. Background color. Disable message animations. I don't get why everyone's names are purple. Widget editor, HTML, CSS, now nah, stuff like that. Font setting. Eh. Oh, no. No, people have different names. Okay, cool. Uh, different colors, rather. Cool, cool, cool. I'll get out of that now. Get back to the game. Anyway. Irish dream names fit the theme today. <laughs> Why? Is today like uh, St. Patrick's Day or something? No. Uh, I wish I could go to the go to the pub for that. Oh, I miss the pub. I, I miss the pub. Hey, F in the chat for pubs, boys. I mean, it's been too long. It's been way too long. Oh, man. Logo says, our 12-year-old Zoomers. I don't... Th I don't think so. I think... I think... Um, I think they're over the cusp of Gen Z. Uh, Alex says, you're building... Oh, of course. Yeah, I'm building a Celtic church. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, excuse my memory. Excuse my very cringe memory. Oh man, I'm actually, I'm not going to lie, this is actually really, really encouraging. A very lively chat, plenty of viewers uh, happening. So I'm, I'm loving this. I'm hoping this only keeps expanding over more and more episodes um, as we get more and more into base territory. Let me just eat a tater. Let me just eat one of my taters. I love taters. 
Like in the chat. Hey, give me, give me a love in the chat for potatoes. The only food on God, true food on God's green earth. You see, the in the what they don't want to tell you is that in the the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that that fruit was not an apple. It was actually a potato. I know it's mind blowing because uh, fruit gives all knowledge. Uh, sorry, potatoes potatoes give all knowledge. They are. The font of knowledge. They give knowledge to all who eat upon them. Big Nick. F. F. Boil them. Mash them. Stick them in a stew. Oh, yeah. That should... That um, <laughs> that little line by Samwise. Lord of the Rings. Uh, that's where that line's from, people. But that little line from Samwise, that, that should be an ad. That should 100% be an ad. <laughs> like, it's just perfect. It's one of those perfect little jingles. Um, or, like, little, little mottos for, like, a potato brand. And... I'm surprised that as far as I'm aware, no one's done it. I, I reckon someone might have. I mean, I'm not exactly a, a, a scholar on potato advertising. But uh, if that doesn't exist, that needs to happen. I might even just straight up get into the potato industry just to just to do it. Hey, Jeff, or go for Jesus. I'm watching on my computer, boosting those algos. Heck yeah. Oh, you legend. Absolute legend. Always helping with the algos. Yep. The boys, that's the thing, people. The boys need to help each other out with the, uh, with the algorithms because they're uh, not very kind. All right. Um, just need some iron. I just need some iron. Okay, we got some coal. That that's helpful as well. But I primarily need iron. The Chad multitasker. See as I maintain eye contact with the uh, with the viewers while I'm accurately mining the coals. Let's make some more torches. Oh man, oh man. Oh, I did mention I was going to give my um <clears throat> my some level of thoughts on the debate I just moderated. So for those who don't know, I actually literally right before this stream I moderated a um over an hour debate. Um between uh, Craig Trulia, so Orthodox Christian Theology, that you can look up his YouTube channel there, Orthodox Christian Theology, and a uh, longtime Protestant apologist and blogger, Turretin fan. And they basically debated justification by faith alone. Is justification by faith alone or by um, faith uh, working with works and all that? To, to put it very simply, because I know Orthodox don't want to say we're not saved by works, we're not meriting and all that, but that effectively works are included. They'll say that. Um, in our uh, justification. But uh, yeah, I do want to mention my thoughts on that at some point. I just want to make sure I keep focused because the worst thing I did, like the biggest thing I got to get over with these streams is that being able to talk and also do stuff at the same time and not just randomly do nothing in the game as I talk. So I want to keep a little bit focused. I just want to get to my tasks first. So like finding a decent cave with iron, probably at a lower altitude. So I'm probably going to go to a, the other side of this hill and um, yeah, begin mining there. Um, or may maybe I have some iron in my chest. I'll, I'll go check. I think I actually did. Oh, I think... No, I think I actually did. Hang on. I'm going to check that out. Um, Thingo. The last movie I saw... Logos says, last movie I saw starring Sean Astin as a Christian movie. I believe it, believe it or not. Really? Okay, that's cool. I hope he's very nice and based Christian. That's awesome. Um, Alex says, uh, because God is omnipotent, that mean he... X-ray hacks. Can't can't refute that. You just you just can't. Um, no, I don't have any iron. Oh, that sucks. Oh well. Um, well the sun's going down now, so I may as well get ready to sleep. Uh, let's read some of the chat. Um, Goyf G says I thought my question went over well. Yeah, I think it did. Um, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I thought the objections that you raised that Paul received or hypothetically would receive would be more appropriate for an orthodox apologetic. So when they say, when Paul raised the objection, oh, so we can just do whatever we want and we're, and we're saved. I thought that's more akin to the objections. Um, oh, no, no, no. Oh, sorry. I completely, 
My mind went blank. No, no. Okay. I oh, know. I totally get the objections. Okay. So that, um, that Craig, so you asking that, does Craig ever get those objections to his beliefs? Why or why not? Um, I think, well, I, I personally think in the context of those passages is more talking about, um, so what we're talking about here is Romans 3, 8 and 6, 1, where Paul raises the potential objection. Oh, so we can just keep sinning and God's grace will abound more. Um, that's more so to do with the active manifestation of sin than the um, than of good works. Um, but so I, I think I think the better objection, I think the one you've raised before um, with me, the better objection, or rather the better point to raise with Orthodox and Catholics is with respect to monogism. Um, the objection Paul gets that when he when when it's said to him, so why does he God still find sin um, for who can resist his will, which is more or less like Calvinists and other monogists, they get that all the time. They do. Um, synergists don't. Simple as that. So I think that's an extremely powerful thing to raise. Um, although that debate wasn't really on monogism, synergism. So not really there. Um, either way, Spectre, hello, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. Glad to see you here. Um, but yeah, very good debate overall. I'm just going to get a little bit of food for myself. Going to raid the locals. Um, get my taxes. These are my. These are their taxes for my protection. Uh, as in the protection that I give them. And now I'm going to search for a half decent place to start mining. Um, you know stuff, I'm just going to run straight in there. I'm just going to run straight in that cave and take out the skeleton. Because I mean, I just need, I need to mine in the end. Uh, it doesn't look like he's here anymore, so that's good. How do I get down? How do I get down? Uh... Let's build a bridge. Oh, it's going to be ugly. Yummy. All right. Oh. Oh, okay. This is looking like a half-decent cave here. Okay, okay. Let's light her up a little bit more. The great thing about the latest update... So, I'm using the experimental snapshot for the latest uh, Minecraft update. And the best thing about it is that mobs no longer spawn at light levels above zero. So it has to actually be pitch black, absolute zero for, for enemies to spawn. Whereas before, I believe it was light level seven and under that enemies could spawn. So now, even in very dark sections of caves, monsters might not spawn. Although, of course, there's plenty of pitch, pitch black in this cave, so it's very likely I might encounter some, but uh, I haven't. So it's great, really good. Um... Hopefully, I might find some iron. Because the other... Oh, crap. Okay. Hello. Hello. Um, that's the... Oh, yeah. I'm just, I'm just too good. I'm just, I'm just too good. I'm just too good. Anyway. Um, Jeff says the... That's the monogist anticipated... Yeah, yeah. It's the monogist anticipated objection. Um, and Jeff says the Roman 6-1 is a justification anticipated objection. Um, okay, I guess I just haven't read the, all of 6-1 yet. I don't really have it off the top of my head exactly what Paul's talking about there. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take you on that. I'll read it. Maybe I'll read it again soon. Um, but yeah, great debate. Great stuff that happened. Um, more of it to come, hopefully. Um, I think Tarotin did express interest in, a, in another debate uh, sometime in the future. Um, perhaps even on this uh, monogist question. I think, I think that's the big one. Because while I think the, um... The Orthodox do have good points and good uh, good categories with which to talk about this. Even though I do ultimately think that they... Um, how would I say it? That their equation of justification with sanctification I don't think is warranted. That, that would be my take. Um, but nonetheless, they have, some, they have some good points to take with faith. At least, at least with those... They have good points against Protestants who may think it's just an easy believism and that's it. Although I do ultimately think where the Orthodox Apologetics uh, falls apart is with stressing, yes, we need faith, but we also need works, which is like, yeah, we agree. We do we do agree that, but justification, the I, it comes to the question of legal fiction, whether justification is something that I think it's the core of the question, whether justification is something that happens prior to good works or, um, or, or simultaneously with uh, good works. And I think the biblical evidence will quite, quite certainly does show that justification is prior to good works, which would basically, um, justify pun intended the distinction between justification and sanctification. Not that the words can't be changed in certain concepts, uh, con uh, context, 
But uh, either way, that's just that's just my uh, take on that. But I do think the um, the case for monogism is far easier to make, especially throughout Paul's letters, and especially uh, with that section with the objection of who can resist God's will. I think I I genuinely agree with the reformed apologetic that if you're not getting that objection to your soteriology, then you might be missing Paul's point. Uh, Logos says, Jeremiah, the main difference IRC is Catholics think the grace of God is given to believers is creator, whereas Orthodox believe the grace of God given to believers is God himself. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, Logos and Jeremiah, exchanging thoughts, very nice. This is a space of learning, brothers and sisters. We do love to learn here. Uh, and I do intend on that in the near future, because I'm, I'm thinking at some point in the near future, um, because I'm not going to be getting... Well, I've been wanting it for a while, but also because teaching work simply won't be happening for me for a while. Um, I want to eventually get a Patreon happening uh, for this channel. And with it... Ooh, skeleton. Yeah, nice stuff that. And with that, uh, privileges for um, certain contributors like a Discord where people teach... can like You can get like... Uh, you can get like casual level teaching on like various different topics like language and all that stuff. So I think that'll be it'll be very, very fun and beneficial. And as well, even for certain uh, donors as well, access to like a common Minecraft server uh, where I'll come on, say hi and all that stuff. Alex says, oh, I'm going back to work, lol. Ah, catch you, Alex, catch ya. I'll uh, chat with you later uh, with the rest of the boys. <laughs> Nick Robertson, hey, brother. Hey, Nick, how are you, mate? Hope your life is going swell. I am just trying to look for an appropriate place to get iron because I need that. Um, in order to delve into the depths uh, appropriately, or rather far enough, so that I can actually get more resources. Um, I might just leave that... Ooh, tell me that's a ravine. I might just head... Um, I'll probably just focus on cobblestone for now, just so I can actually get the church structure happening. Ooh, Hello. Oh, I like this. I do like this. Okay, let's head down. Do I have a bed with me? No, I don't. Okay, I should... Won't spend too long here because night is approaching. Nick says, doing okay, man. Good to hear. Good to hear, mate. Oh, hello. Oh, this is a nice... Oh, uh, a skeleton. No, nope, stuff that. Stuff that. I'm out. See us. Oh, come on. Ah, oh, I hate that. They're too accurate. You see what I mean? They are way too accurate. Ah, oh, far out. I hate that. Advanced Iron Age, get Iron Tech, easy peasy. Yeah, it becomes easy peasy because with Iron, I can actually make a shield. Um, and then skeletons are just basically screwed beyond that point. They'll, they won't be able to stop me. So the big disadvantage is that where I am is actually quite high altitude far above sea level and with the new update which this snapshot is part of uh ore distribution has changed quite a bit so it's very rare to find iron at this level uh i'll be honest i don't uh jeremiah says i'll be honest i don't understand the catholic teaching of faith working through charity that says isn't that what protestants believe haha <laughs> that's why look that's why i believe jeremiah um many not all there are real differences but many of the disagreements on justifications, in my experience, between prots, orthos, and Catholics, is semantics. A lot of it really is semantics, and and just a misunderstanding of what Protestants mean by faith alone. Because ultimately, the faith alone that saves, well, the, as the cliche saying goes, faith alone that saves is never alone. So saving faith necessarily results in good works that follow afterwards. But it is not those good works that save it is the it is the saving faith itself it is the genuine faith that saves that's that's how the protestants would uh, would say it and uh, oh hello oh a lot of stone here i could get cobble from here yeah this is a good spot all right i'll, I'll just mine cobble here for days i'll probably also make a bed for over here just like a nice little outpost uh, Nick says, wait, dude, Caves and Cliffs come out already. I haven't played Minecraft in a while. It's not out yet, but they have released uh, small snapshots for it. Um, so I'm playing one of those right now, one of the experimental snapshots, which is, not going to lie, it's not the best optimized. Um, 
But hey, it works. Okay, night is approaching. So I should probably go kill some sheep. Yeah, I don't know if she is, so I need to kill sheep. Uh, ubi stovis. Ubi sto. Ubi sunt Ubi sunt always. Non hic. Non ilic. Ah, uh, ubi, ubi, ubi. And that was just some Latin flexing. Those who know Latin, let them understand. <laughs> All right, come on, let's get that. Let's get that. Just one more. And then I can make a bed that I'll just take along with me everywhere. There we go. All right, cool. Crafting bench. Bang, bang. Nope, oh, nope, bang. All right. All right, cool. Bed and sleep. All right. Uh, Goy for Jesus. I spent about 20 minutes at the world meeting of families trying to explain to a priest how we have genuine differences. And then towards the end, he gave me the anticipated objection of Romans 6 1. I remember you telling me that story, Jeff. That was actually quite funny. It's, um, <laughs> it is really, it is quite satisfying. Um, <laughs> you present a biblical position and then the, your interlocutor gives an objection that the authors of scripture themselves anticipated. <laughs> it's, it's quite, it's quite a, vindicating uh, when that happens. It kind of gives a smile on your face. You almost feel like you don't have to answer the objection because it's like, hey, these these guys uh, who Paul opposes, they gave that objection and he says they're wrong. So, I mean, I just don't need to answer that. I mean, you do for the sake of intellectual honesty, but like, it's not really that urgent. Could we sabere always? Um... Uh, always, uh, in the, always in the girl called, uh, bed, uh, uh, lectus, lectus, uh, lectum in the girl, lectum in the girl, uh, et ecce, uh, lectum, uh, lectum habeo. Uh huh. Upon this block, I'll build my girch. What's a girch? I hope you mean church. <laughs> But yes, that is exactly what the uh, series name is about. Upon this block, I will build my church. That is literally what I am doing. Upon Minecraft blocks, I am building a Celtic church. Although in the future, I want to... Eventually, I want to get to something like the Hagia Sophia. Maybe not exactly like the Hagia Sophia. I want an original design, but like it in scale and grandeur and all that. They'll probably be in like a later season. Because uh, once Caves and Cliffs fully comes out, I'll commence the real season one. Because this right now is just a pilot season, all right? It's just kind of like... The test season, if you will. The real season one will be when Caves and Cliffs finally releases. Logos dik et lectum et lectulum. Sick, sick, sick. Gravel is very good as well. Um, it's good for flint and steel. Plenty of coal here. I'm thinking... I'm thinking maybe I want to travel just a little bit further out um, to find a better... Spot to mine and all. Actually, you no, know no, I can just make a mining outpost here. Yeah, stuff it. Why not? I'll make a. This is gonna be my little mining base. Um, I'll plant it. Oh, that's iron. Ladies and gentlemen, we got iron. Woo! Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get this bread, or rather, this uh, ferrum for Latin. Let's dump this. Uh, iron in Latina, lingua Latina is the ferrum. Uh, okay. See, I'm, I'm practicing, I'm, I'm, I'm practicing my Latin a little bit on these streams because as I mentioned, I think last time I intend to do other separate streams for Minecraft, but entirely in Latin because Minecraft does have a Latin language setting and it'll be really, really cool. Um, and I do want to have, I want to have guests both on this series and on that one as well. Uh, that one will of course will require people who have Latin, uh, who know Latin. Uh, Jeremiah says, just, just like the periodic table. Ha. Huh? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. The periodic table, the symbols use well, Latin. So there you go. That's why iron is F E in the periodic table. I'm just going to build a mine the traditional way. I haven't done this in a long time because I'm so used to now just finding a deep cave and using that to go underground in Minecraft. But really the, the old fashioned way is just as simple as just dig down. Um, yeah. 
Aitas Ferri Alguinit. Uh, Aitas, uh, quides Aitas, uh, non, uh, non skio uh, uh, hoc verbum. Uh, I need more space, okay. You know, I'm just gonna get a nice chest up here so that I can store all the junk that I didn't, that I do not need. Double chest. All right. Um, double chest? Yeah, double chest, why not? All right, so I do not need that, 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 nor that. Actually, I might need that. I don't need all... Actually, I'll keep the cobble with me just so I don't forget. Because um, cobble is ultimately what I need for this church. Uh, dump these flowers, eggs, pff, door, I don't need that. I'm keeping some dirt with me just to just in case I need to build stuff, build bridges. Aitas, ah, aitas uh, est ion. Ah, ion est uh, 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 verbum graecum. Aitas, aitas ferri adwinit. Sic. Alt ion. Uh, so you're saying aitas est tempus multo longus. Yes, yes, yes. Um, aitas ferri adwinit. Um, so, uh, so iron is coming for a long time or I need to get my axes, pickaxes again. All right. Might do more, a little more than that. Another two. All right. Perfect. All right, let's just keep digging. If you haven't, if anyone hasn't, and if you know friends who may like this, so Christian commentary, but they're also gamers, they like their Minecraft, like their Bible, like their theology, do share this. Do share my channel and especially this stream because um, it's very, very much relevant for that. Um, was I going to like bring up any other specific topics to discuss in this stream? I'm not sure. Um, let me check my notes again. Um, oh, Aitas Ferriad win it. Okay, okay, got ya. Age of Iron, got ya, sorry. I thought that was, um, I thought that was like plural. And then somehow Aitas was being used in a, in a adverbial sense. All that doesn't make sense now that I look at it. Oh man, this is uh, always the most uh, grindy part of the game. Although then again, I reckon even if I don't find iron soon, I'll just take all this cobblestone um, and start building the church. Oh, hello, we got water. This could mean a cave. Oh, come on. Um, let's, suffer. let's take a look. Ooh. No, nope, do not like that. It is entirely underwater. Oh, well, I'll... Uh... Yeah, cool, that works well. I'll just remember it's there. Corcini, hello. Welcome back, my man. How are you? Oh, come on, it's at all. All right, time to redirect course. Set this way. Oh, man. And hello to you, off streak. I don't think I've seen you. I don't know if I saw you before. But yeah, basically right now, I'm... Uh, basically right now, I'm just uh, digging for a lot of cobble. I'm hoping to find iron as well, um, just to upgrade my tools a little bit. And especially to make a shield against those skeletons so I can actually go into the caves more reliably. Um, but yeah, a lot of cobble because that's basically the main structure of my uh, Celtic church that I'm going to be building. So, I I have I have a ton of it right now. So really, I'll probably I'll probably just go up after a few more, after just a little bit more. This is like the silver mine at Scalitz. Don't know what Scalitz is. is. That like a I assume it's a real place. 
or I don't know why but that name just gave me uh, Skyrim vibes. Maybe it is Skyrim. I have, I have no idea. <laughs> oh my gosh, all this non-stone material. This is the most annoying part. So digging into these little pockets of non-stone, um, you know you won't find any materials there because it just doesn't happen. Stuff it. I'll, uh, you know, I'll just take what I have. I'll take what I have um, and start building the frame of the church. So I saw this nice, um, this nice design online of a Celtic church that is, it's like, it's, it's, it's a very simple house shape made of simple stone, uh, triangular roof, but also the front or the back, I think facing the, uh, graveyard. Um, it has these like three, um, elongated windows going up and down and the center one's a little bit taller. I suspect it's some kind of uh, Trinitarian, um, symbology happening with those windows. I'm not hundred percent certain, but I guess if any of you are familiar with it, once I show you the shape of these windows, maybe you'll, uh, maybe you'll know it. One day we too, we too will have to scavenge for metal in the earth. Maybe once the, once the boog comes, <laughs> let those based men know, understand what I mean by boog. Um, what are mining conditions like in Minecraft world? Hopefully better than the ancient world. Says a goy for Jesus. Much better. Oh, uh, oh, hello. Oh, oh no, this is good. I can even see iron all the way down there. I don't know if the quality is high enough. This is good. Okay, so that's a dripstone cave and this is like a fat ravine. Okay, no, nah, this is good. This is a very good mining spot. I just need to make a shield first and some better weapons and I'll be G. Um, I'm going to mark this spot. I'm just going to sleep first, but I'm going to definitely mark that spot. Uh, Logger says, Skelet is a real place and a place in an RPG game. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Ancient mining was a nightmare. Yeah, 100%, 100% it was. Um, all the safety standards you have for mining today... Especially with respect to breathing. That alone is... I shudder to think of all the men whose lungs were just obliterated in the ancient world just because of they had to go to the mines. Alright, so this is my marker for this spot. So I'm going to come back here because that's going to be very resource rich down there. Jeremiah, that's a good routine. You got to check it out. I will be 100%. I'm going to build a little bit of the church now because that's the whole point of this series. I want to, I want to finally uh, make the weight a little bit more worth it. Uh, how much iron have you got in total? Just the one, but really, it's all I need. Um, I just need a shield so I can reliably fight uh, skeletons. But there's iron directly below me in that ravine as well, so I can grab that and uh, very quickly make a sword as well and some armor, and I'll, I think I'll be G. How much iron? Blah blah blah. Scala's Kingdom. Oh, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Hello, Mr. Naps. Hello. Yeah, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Um, my brother played played that game quite a bit. It's very, very, um, very, very in depth. Very difficult from what I hear as well. But also very fun. Yeah, okay, that's, that makes sense. That's awesome. So I'll show you what I'm thinking for the windows. Because I've seen it in a real um Celtic church design. So, pull these up. So it's going to be at the back. Um, I'll, I'll probably put like a little graveyard at the back. But uh, this is the base. Let's see. So it is equal. Okay, good. It's equal. So I can have three windows. So one window there, one window there, one window there. So here's what I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, that should be a good level. So, windows start at this level. Uh, yep, that's right in the center. Uh, Logos says, if Ben-Hur was sentenced to the mines, it would have been a short movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Okay. So, that's the base of the windows. Now, I'm going to... So, it's going to be a pretty tall church now that I think about it. Um, but, yeah. Now, I'm just going to build them up. So, da, 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 da. that's tall enough. Yeah, I think that's tall enough. And I'll gladly take damage. Um, that so that means that. Okay. Come on, book down. Cool. All right.
All right, this is what I mean. Who's seen this design before for Windows, this layout? Uh, this is one I saw in a Celtic church that I looked up, or at a couple, rather. Um, and I think, it, I 100% I, I, I reckon it's some kind of Trinitarian symbolism. But that's the basic shape. Um, I think I've seen it in like purple and or yellow uh, glass panes. Uh, Logos says, now we need some redhead parishioners. <laughs> oh, okay, I know, I get you. Uh, I mean, I don't really have a mod for that. There was, There is a really good Minecraft mod for villages, like improved villages and it does include hair color. But, uh, oh, kind of, it's kind of preset. Uh, Mr. Naps, full damage is now worthy sacrifice to the Lord. 100% offer your bodies as living sacrifices. That is literally just what I'm doing. Exactly what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, given the height, uh, this is definitely going to be a costly church, but a very worthwhile one. 100%. So now I'm just going to build all the way up and basically get the roof shape, uh, the shape of the roof happening. So probably build up one... Come on. Two. How high do I want this roof to be? I think that's high enough. Yeah, that's high enough. I might replace that center block with um, with a stair. Can I even do that? No, I don't think I can because it's not a two-way. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've seen a design before. Uh, tall and thin seems familiar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, tall, tall and thin. There's many tall and thin uh, types of churches. Um one of the best, oh, fire, one of the best, most beautiful churches in my area, at least, um, would be Saint. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go one more block higher than that, just so it's kind of equal with the windows. But um, Saint Mary's Cathedral down in Sydney, which is the the mother church for the Catholic Church um, in Australia, pretty much, um, or but de facto, I think. But it's the mother church for Sydney officially. Um, it's big and it is really beautiful. Um, it's one of the biggest cathedrals in the world period um nick says yeah i've seen that design before i believe uh, logos borgera oi need to get to confession <laughs> bigger oi need to get to confession <laughs> forgive me father for i have sinned my son what what have you sinned for i haven't been to confession obviously so i don't know what the priest says i don't know if it says speak my son or something like that we uh, took all the titles from from me from me da's patch no, the family starving, cousin Moy misdeeds, and the priest's like, "You what, mate? I can't forgive you for that. You darn race traitor." <laughs> okay, that's a bit a bit edgy, but <laughs> you darn traitor to the Irish people. <laughs> I uh, think it would be quite serious. That that might uh, that's how I imagine a uh, Irish confession would be. But yeah, that's the that's the design I'm intending for. Nice and beautiful. Big and beautiful. And I'll have staircases to kind of make it a little bit more gradual uh, for the for the roof slopes. Oh man, talking for so long. It really grinds away at the voice. Now, I'm not 100% certain how the entrance should look. So I kind of just have, I mean, I probably won't even have a doorway. It'll probably just be like, just open up. Um, but I've got to, I've got to look a little bit more about how the interiors would look. Um, yeah. Like how, how would the pews be arranged? What would the altar and all that look like? That's going to be something to do a bit more digging on. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to focus on the basic frame on the outside. Um, get that, get that nice and sorted. And then uh, I guess once I expend all my cobblestone here, we're going to go back on the adventure in the ravine. So that'll be nice and fun. This is like one of the only times when cobblestone actually will look half decent for a, for a building in Minecraft. Because otherwise cobblestone is just like, you just don't use it. You always use some more stylized stone uh, for building in Minecraft. But yeah, that's our results so far, ladies and gentlemen. This is our church at the moment. 
And now we're going to do a little bit more spelunking. I'm going to go back into that cave, into that ravine that I found. And we're going to get some resources. Jake! Brother Jake! How are ya? You absolute legend. I'm so glad to see you here. Oh, awesome. Awesome stuff. How are you going, brother? My fellow Penty brother. Yeah, that's right. I, I remember, I think, I think Logos, you asked at the very beginning where the Pentecostal's at. We're here, brother. We're here. <laughs> you are a Mason right now? 100% I am. Wait, no, 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 I take that, I'm not that, I'm not that Mason. I'm, oh, Logos, why did you do that? Bro, now all the Catholics are going to clip me out of context and I'm going to be accused of being a Mason. <laughs> oh, man. Brother Paul the Stone Mason. Yeah, thanks for that clarification. <laughs> Thank you. But it's a bit late, though. I think the Catholics are going to be quoting me out of, are going to be clipping this one now. Um, Dang. Well, dang. Uh, fantastic cleaning the house and watching you. Glad to hear. Glad to hear, Brother Jake. Well, I'm hoping you're enjoying this so far. You caught it a good time because right now I'm about to be jumping down into this cave uh, with a conveniently placed uh, waterfall so I can easily come back up. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be jumping into this cave in order to get some extra resources. And uh, yeah, keep building my church. I don't know if you saw just then, um, but I just started with the frame of my uh, Celtic-style church. So uh, that's going to be nice and fun. It's it's looking, I mean, very bare bones at the moment, but uh, hey. Uh, Jake says, Kath, we're going to we're gonna take you out of context just like scripture. Ooh! Sheesh! That's, that's a little thing the kids do down here, but sheesh! Okay, we're getting the spice already. <laughs> I, um, I kind of want to avoid a flame war in my chat, but... Uh, let God's will be done. <laughs> well, hello there, Mr. Zambi. Now, the issue is that I am reliant on a stone sword, stone sword right now. Um, oh, darn, there's a zombie right there. As long as there's zombies around me, I can't sleep. Um, I'm just hoping to take him out really quickly. Oh, for God's sake. Okay, cool. Oh, crap. Okay, now he won't get me. The water will push him down. Yeah, stuff off, mate. Mate, you can't get me, mate. Get good, mate. Get good. Alright, let's light this up. Oh, we got copper. Very nice. Uh, yes, that's, for those who don't know, the new... Oh, crap. Okay, no, it's a regular zombie. Oh, I thought it was a baby zombie, because those look bloody worse. But, um, yeah, the new update is including a new ore. Um, copper. You can't build tools from it, but it has other very, very good uses. Alright, okay, so this place is more or less safe now. Um, lit up enough so the zombies can't get me. Cathlor, Logos Logistics, he descended into the nether. <laughs> well, I will be at some point. Maybe not now, but soon. Oh, wow, okay, this is a nice cave. So, I'm quite, I'm, I'm getting into decent depths. So, I should be encountering more ores as we travel. So this is good. And there's some lava down there. Oh, crap. Ah! Out of my way. Nope. 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 I'm gone. See ya. Let's get that iron quickly. Okay. So I'm going to set up a little base here. I'm not going to leave. Um, did I bring that? I didn't bring that bench. Okay. Um, where's a good spot? I think I might like carve out a little house over here. Yeah, let's do that. Why not? Spyglass is very cool. Yep, that is correct. Spyglasses are looking pretty awesome for this game. Oh, my phone's almost out of charge. Um, I can still look at the comments. I can still see them somehow else. Uh, the Apostles' Creed in Minecraft. He descended into the net. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I remember last week, Logos, you um, you saying. You don't feel comfortable with giving anathemas in a, in a, in a game <laughs> like this, which is fair enough. Now, it's kind of the opposite. I don't exactly feel the most comfortable with the, uh, uh, with like, like, like that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say you're being a blasphemer or anything. No way. But uh, I don't know. I don't feel the most comfortable saying Jesus descended into the, into the nether. <laughs> That's just me. That's just me. Uh, I still see the humor in it. This might be good enough for now. I'll just dump that there. 
Get a couple of furnaces going on. Perfect. All right. Let's cook this. Um... Logos. Yeah, I'm being confusing now. Eh. Well, well. All right. Um, so while this is cooking, I'm going to protect myself. Give me literally, literally 10 seconds. I'm going to get my charger so I can plug my phone in because that's what I'm using to read the chat. So literally a few seconds will not be long. Charging. All right, good. Now I can see the chat. Awesome. Mr. Naps, when you get back, would appreciate a run through of your setup. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, I've actually considered a while ago kind of doing like a whole tour of my study, um, including my little library, which is actually right behind me. Um, maybe I'll do that towards the end before we uh, finish up today, if, uh, if you guys are keen for that. Um, oh, come on. How did I only get one? Um... Oh, darn it. I need more... Mm, I need more wood now. Oh, well. Let's get that really quick. I need more wood just for a shield. Um, but yeah, I'll glad, um, I, might, I might do that before we end up today. So I'll probably just like take off my webcam and just show you guys around a little bit. Um, I think the author bros will especially appreciate. Actually, down where I'm looking, I've got this uh, very nice um, somewhat icon of Christ, but it's in the shape of a cross. And it has the, the Lord's Prayer in Greek in it. So it's a, it's a very nice uh, item. I got it from this uh, Greek store, this local Greek store, um, just before it shut down. So I'm, I'm glad I got it when I did. Um, okay. Uh, Agoy for Jesus says, In world Christianity in Minecraft reminds me of the implications of there being a Pope Mobile in Pixar's cast. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing that someone did the funniest little breakdown of that. Like, hang on, there's a Pope mobile. That means in the Cars universe, there was a, and I want to avoid anything of blasphemy, but I'm just repeating what this person said. There was a car Jesus who died for all cars in the world. And so the implications of that were just baffling, absolutely baffling. <laughs> I, I, so I guess, yeah, it's kind of similar here. The implications of, Christendom expanding into Minecraft. What does that mean? I guess I might take it as something like with um, uh, with the Chronicles of Narnia, with how C.S. Lewis said that. He said it's basically the same God, the same Jesus, but manifesting in a different universe. Um, so it was a very, very interesting perspective with how he did that with Narnia. So I guess I might um, do that with here. I'm just expanding the great, the original Great Commission um, down to a different dimension. So I guess that's how I'll take it. Um, Mr. Naps, would you do a tour video separately? Uh, yes, yes, I would. I'll, I will, you know what, now that you asked for it, I probably will do it and perhaps even very soon. Um, so yeah, they expect that to be coming very soon. Um, Logos says, interesting icon. The Lord's Prayer was recited in Greek last night at the church I went to. Very nice, very nice. Don't they do that, um, don't, wouldn't you do that like every divine liturgy in a, in an Orthodox church? Isn't that like, like just a mainstay staple or is it, or is it not? Um, cause I, I, I just thought it would be, um, yeah, finally. Okay. We've got a shield, which means the enemy is stuffed. Hang on. Where is it? There, there we go. Oh, it's a creeper. That's nice. That's always, uh, that's always fun. Let's just clear some of these spikes. Cause when you jump on them, they will actually hurt you. So cave diving in this game. Oh, more iron. Perfect. So cave diving in this game is a little bit more dangerous. There we go. All right, let's light up that section. And we got another Zambi. We got a Zambi, boy. Oops, sorry. Uh, Logo says, the analogy between Christianity, Minecraft, and Aslan religion chronicles knows what I was thinking when I made the irrelevant joke. Not all Orthodox use Greek in liturgy. Okay. Oh, sorry. I thought, 
Oh, okay, I thought you said reciting the Lord's Prayer in Greek and with the emphasis on the Lord's Prayer. Okay, so you do recite the Lord's Prayer, but not all in, in Greek. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Hey, base vernacular, base vernacular service. <laughs> oh, man, all the, all the rad trades are like, the mass can only be in Latin, it can't be in anything else. That's, that's the one thing, like, look, I sympathize with the... Because most of my best friends are trad cats, although not to this autistic level where it's like only Latin and all that. Some of them do believe that Latin is the most proper, but they're not insano tier rad trads. Um, but that's one of the things that even with those who say that Latin's the preferred one, I'm just like, but what's the basis for that? Like, other than a practical measure where Latin's the most commonly known among all the languages. Okay, fair enough. But then in situations where that's not the case, like why? 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 Why be so rigid with Latin? And I hate using that word rigid because, of course, it's used by absolute leftists to uh, condemn anything that's basically conducive to order. Um, but I, I, so I, I use it. Um, I only use it when I think it's appropriate. All right. Let's let's put a brief storage chest here just so I can dump whatever I get. A um, lot of copper. A lot of copper. Uh, that's right. The <laughs> Mr. Naps, rigid gang, rigid gang. Let's go. We're rigid. Hey, press. Uh, oh, what what should we press? Press press W for win because we're rigid gang. I love being rigid. Don't you love being rigid? Uh, Jake says it's much like the KJV with a lot of prots. It's the high and mighty sound. Yeah, yeah, that's right. KJV only in his and onlyism is very cringe. Wait till they find out that the translators weren't KJV onlyists. <laughs> oh dear. It's a meme though. It's a real meme. KJV onlyism. Actually, here's something a uh, proper theology topic to discuss. So, one of my coming videos, my next major long form video, is going to be basically what I hope to be a comprehensive take on scriptural uh, ordinances pertaining to. Oh, hello, in a zombified villager. Uh, the scriptures take on the role of government. Um, because that is especially pertinent right now with many, uh, with many so-called Christians even, uh, believing and affirming that the state has the right to totally shut down a person's uh, freedom of movement, ability to make their livelihood on the grounds of medical speculation. And even in many cases to shut down the church gathering, uh, at the winds of the government that those people, I believe. And I'll back that up in the video, but I genuinely believe people who believe that, that the government has the right to regulate um, and even ban the gathering in the body on speculative medical grounds or really on any grounds. I genuinely believe such people are enemies of Christ. It's a dividing line. It's a line in the sand. I, I don't think they can be compromised on it. Um, but yeah, that's my next video coming up on the role of government. Um, yeah. So I've, I've bought a couple of books already. I'm probably going to get some more. Um which basically uh, do a really good job at exegeting the scriptures on the role of the government. And my basic contention is going to be that God ordained government for a very specific jurisdiction, and that is justice and order. When someone does evil, um, someone can bring a charge to the government and the magistrate can enact justice. Simple as that. The government was not made as a regulator. It was not made as a manager. So really everything, in my opinion, is going to be a bit of a woke take, I know. But really everything from like um, speeding laws uh, or dri driving laws in general, really speeding laws, um, regulations on um, really most regulations on business and all that um, are outside the government's jurisdiction. That's not the government's role. Now, it's not meaning that's not meaning I'm going to say, let's just fragrantly disobey every law because it's one thing to say it's an illegitimate law. It's another thing to say. Let's just disobey it every time because it might not be prudential. Um, I consider it, for example, prudential for now just to obey um, road laws because many road laws in the end do follow good practice, even if I think it's illegitimate for the government to enforce them uh, as, a, as a matter of law. Um, but nonetheless, I follow most road laws and it doesn't inconvenience me so much that I can't practice my faith and run my life properly. So that's why even if I believe road laws, for example, are illegitimate, they're not uh, in the government's domain... Um, I'll follow them anyway. Um, but now we're seeing the outworking of extended government power in our world with the uh, with the COOF. Um, all these unjust regulations placed on the healthy, uh, the church being shut down, and uh, now a line has to be drawn. There has to be active resistance to that. Um, but yeah, um, 
Anyway, uh, KJV is great from a literary standpoint, 100%. KJV is pretty good, though, not going to lie. 100%, 100%. KJV is great. KJV is a great Bible. It's beautiful language. Um, not the most up-to-date when it comes to manuscript study, but even, even there, it's still a great Bible, just especially for the language. Like, nothing tops it when it comes to language. Um X twenty X five twenty nine homie, that's right, Jake, that's right. I want to make that a shirt. I think I actually want to make that a shirt. I had that idea a while ago. Um, Jake, we must obey God rather than man. Mister Naps, our government is neoliberal corporatism by stealth. Facts. I think it's becoming more and more overt by the day. Um, I don't think you can use the Bible to argue gathering for worship can be suspended for the public good. Um, yep, yeah, no, hundred percent. I agree. I agree. Um, what is the public good in the end? That's the the issue. When, if someone was to argue for the quote unquote common or public good that church must be shut down, they immediately assume that the public good is distinct from spiritual health, that spiritual health does not matter. And that's pathetic. In the worst times of crisis, that's actually when the church needs to be open, including in the worst of pandemics, as existed throughout church history. You can find tons of precedent from that, including from our own Papa Martin Luther. Um, Obviously, that doesn't mean just bringing every sick person into a healthy congregation. That doesn't mean they shouldn't exercise self-restraint and self-regulation. It simply means the state has no right to legislate on that. It is the state's, it is the church's business to con- to conduct itself how it deems fit in matters of crisis. Simple as that. That's not the state's role. Uh, Jake, Christian libertarian gang rise up. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Uh, Logos, actually you can, but you'd really have to torture the text. So, uh, actually you can. So you're saying, um, so are you talking about like with respect to like statism, like torturing the text to, to statism? Um, come on doc, that'll preach. (laughs) Oh man. But yeah, yeah. You, you see, as I like to call them, I like to brand them a name so that they're actually recognized as a certain position and not merely a default. Um, Christians who extend, who expand those positions, who say in response to people saying, this is tyranny, we shouldn't do it. And they just say, oh, Romans 13. Uh, they're Christian status. That's what they are. Christian statism. That's the position. And that's the position I'm going to refute. That the state has this vague or totally undefined jurisdiction on all areas of life. It doesn't. The state has almost, I'll say almost, no business in areas of health and education. Or the only time when the state has business mingling in areas like health or education is if there's an actual injustice happening in those areas. So if you've got a doctor, for example, um, deliberately poisoning patients, obviously the state has to intervene in that, obviously. But that's specifically because that is a matter of injustice now. That is the sole state's business. That's it. And it's really, if anything, it's... Let's get him in there. Get him in that lava. Oh, darn it. Oh, well. Um, It really makes perfect sense, though. Like, an analogy I like to use is, like, when you're... Uh, in a doc- when you're in the hospital or whatever, it's not the secretary's job to uh, perform surgery. And people are like, duh, obviously. Um, that doesn't mean... Uh, well, yeah, that's, it's just obvious. That's not the secretary's job. The secretary is given a very specific job. It does not have the right to go and start performing surgery. Exactly the same with government. God gave... Oh, I heard that. I heard that. God gave the government a very specific job, a very specific jurisdiction. That does not include a managerial position in areas of society like education, like health, uh, like cars and all that. That's not the government's job. It is very specifically to respond to injustice and to maintain order. Yes, you'd have to talk uh, talk to the text to argue cancelling church is the best interest of society. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And I'm actually really disgusted with how many self-proclaimed Christians, especially in Protestant circles, not exclusively, but especially, um, and around me in Australia who will argue that, who will actually argue that, like, oh, look, it's okay to suspend, totally suspend corporate worship to allow the government to do that, to even have bloody vaccine passports, um, because it's about loving your neighbor. We've got to love our neighbor and not kill grandma and all that absolute bullcrap, which I'm going to refute as well, because it's actually, I'm actually going to be making multiple videos. This uh, one on the government's role is one video, and um, after that, I'll be making another video. Oh, crap. After that, I'll be making another video on what it means to actually love your neighbor and that their definition of love your neighbor is unbiblical and uh, totally untenable and leads to some of the worst of implications if logically, uh, if brought to its logical extent. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I'll be doing. Um, not the best cave. Haven't, haven't really found much. 
nine, uh, yeah, nine iron, yeah, it's a start. I mean, I guess I can make an iron sword now. And, uh, yeah. Some, uh, some armor. Uh, let's do that. All right. Cool. See First Chronicles 19 to 20. Oh, it's two, two Chronicles, 19 to 20. Um... Logo says, like every time a catastrophe happens to the people of God, they gather for prayer while fasting and mourning. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And it shows how pathetic, weak, and in many cases subversive, um, self -proclaim many self-proclaimed, but not actually Christians are, um, when they start touting for banning the corporate gathering and actually even condemning their brothers and sisters for gathering corporately just because of virus. That's, that's just... To, to me, that's the situation of depart from me, I never knew you. The tough thing, though, is when you is if you encounter, and I thank God I haven't encountered anyone yet, but if you encounter a friend who you genuinely take as a friend, and, they're a, and they claim to be a Christian, but they genuinely believe, they have genuinely thought about it and believe that the government does have this right to do that. And I believe it, you have to be consistent. It'll be extremely hard, but you'll have to say, I do not consider you a brother in Christ. As hard as that will be, you have to be consistent. And I'm hoping I'm ready to do that if that becomes the case, but I really hope I don't have to. Because, um, yeah, our divine convictions trump everything else. Um, God willing, it never will come to that. Although I do suspect some people I know, even though I'm not close friends with them, um, would fall in that camp. Would say, yeah, it's okay for the government to utterly wreck the church in in a number of ways because my health, my pandemic. Eh, God willing, God willing, it won't come to that. With Lewis reference earlier, I thought you meant Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe at first. Yeah, well, um, yeah, well, yeah, I think that is the Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe um, that I was talking about. Um, Chronicles of Narnia and, and all that. Um, because the first part of it, I believe. Um, Logos, but we can do that on Zoom. <laughs> Don't get me start. Don't mate. Do not get me started on that. It's like, hey, we can do this lesser quality, inferior form of meeting. Therefore, let's do it. Uh, no, that's not it. What is it? What does the body of Christ at all mean if there's no physical gathering? There is no body, and not only that, but essential services of the body of Christ, such as the Eucharist, Protestant, Protestant or not, whatever, the Eucharist is an essential practice in the body of Christ. You cannot do that together which is the whole point of it, breaking bread together over Zoom. You can't. Simple as that. Logos says you can't receive the sacraments. From that. That's right. Yeah, through that through that sacramental perspective, you can't receive them through Zoom. So in that area, it's even more blatant. You can't. You simply can't do that. Um, uh, yeah. The, oh, I mean when you said First Chronicles, lol. <laughs> oh, dear. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, how am I going? Pickaxes are good. Iron's good. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, actually... Can I make... Oh, I made a pickaxe. Eh, all good. Well, either way, I've got an iron sword now, so that's nice and helpful. You know what? I think I'll mine a bit more cobble. I'll mine a bunch more cobble, actually. Um, and then eventually, headed back up to the church. Uh, and continue building it a bit more. Um, but yeah, a couple, uh, couple of the books I ordered for this. Um, let me remember. So there's one called Slaying the Leviathan, Slaying the Leviathan, which basically gives a good run through of numerous events throughout Christian history when there was Christian resistance to tyrants. Um, so basically establishing that precedence in the early church um, and basically giving a big middle finger to uh, Christian status to say resistance equals bad. And the second one I got is one written by 16th century Scottish Presbyterian, I believe, Pastor uh, Samuel Rutherford. Um, Presbyter uh, I don't know, Pres I don't know the timeline, but reformed reformed Pastor um, Samuel Rutherford, 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 um, and it's called uh, Lex Rex, Law is King. And it's really long, 600 pages um, from the edition I ordered. And basically an entire treatise about how, uh, so during, during basically the persecution of the, of Protestants and all that in uh, in in Britain, uh, and the big wars between uh, Protestants and Catholics and all that. Basically, the king is not above the law. The law is king, um, 
So it's a good good treatise in that, and definitely very relevant for our situation. So I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be using that for my video as well. Um, yeah, uh, Logos says in the Luria world of the Chronicles of Narnia, the line of which in the wardrobe is probably scripture. Um, Logos says there were saints who forced Roman emperors. Through. Yeah, that's right. Um, the one example I remember, I believe, is Ambrose. Um, I'm trying to remember which emperor. Um, I can barely remember. Was it Theodosius or Theof? I think it was Theodosius. I can't remember, but Theo something. And that emperor apparently committed like a big massacre somewhere. And then as he was coming into the church, Ambrose was like, lol, no. Stood in the door, wouldn't let him in until he um, until he did some mad repentance. Um, pretty based. Very, very based. Oh, uh, yes, the sleep. Uh, Saint, Saint John the Baptist called out King yeah called out King Herod for his adultery that's right yeah um, although of course while we're making these arguments I like, I like to have the um, I like to be in the mindset of our opponents so the Christian status that would say yeah but he wasn't breaking he didn't break any laws he just said something uh, mean to the ruler blah 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 he, didn't, he, he wasn't technically resisting tyranny yeah uh, Christian status are the bane of our... They're, they're the reason why we're here. Let's be real. The mindset of Christian statism that you can't resist tyranny um, and you've got to be this little pacifist doll that uh, allows the, the vulnerable around you to be destroyed because of your pietistic grandstanding. They're the reason why we're in this situation. Um, if the church collectively had the backbone that it used to, we would never have gotten here. Simple as that. But uh, hey, what can you do? Well... Actually, we can do quite a bit, and we are, thank God. There are people resisting right now, many places throughout uh, the West. And uh, yeah, God willing, they'll be successful. What's my depth level? 36. I'm still still a bit high up. As the Minecraft achievement says, we need to go deeper. Much deeper. Okay, iron. Oh, there's a ton. That gravel is going to fall on me as soon as I hit that iron. So let's stand back. Nice. Okay, where's the iron? Ah, down there. Cool. Just one block of iron. Yeah, I'm. resources are much harder to find in this update now. Uh, until you go much, much deeper. Oh, well. Um, let's see. Ooh. Ooh, okay, this is a new cave. And that's a skeleton I hear. Somewhere. Okay, yep, brand new cave. Uh, Theodosius sounds right. Uh, Daniel the prophet was breaking the law, however. Yes, yes, he was. Um, yeah. I, li I like it when that example is brought up because the Christian status mindset, when they say, okay, we can still worship, you just, you just can't do it physically. You can you can still have Zoom church and all that. You just don't, you don't have to do physical, which is bull crap, but whatever, let's go with that. Um, with their logic, they would be the ones saying um, to Daniel, Daniel, you didn't have to open your door and loudly proclaim your worship to the Lord. You didn't, you didn't have to break the law, Daniel. Uh, you could have just done it privately in your own setting, in your own home, which he very well could have. And I think in some occasions he did. Um, but yeah, they will be the ones saying that to Daniel. They will be the ones discouraging his obedience to God and preferring uh, his uh, submission to a tyrant over his obedience to God. Nice try, mate. Oh, oh crap. Oh, come on, hit each other. My health is very low. I want them to hit each other. Okay, I need to get a move on. Crap, otherwise I'm going to die. Oh crap. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Let's eat. Okay, this is really close. Really close call. Um, the apostles were forbidden from teaching Jesus. Yep. I remember iron being everywhere in caves before this update. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Some caves, some caves very deep down, you'll find a lot of iron, but uh, it's nowhere near as common. Um, Logos says, I wonder if there'll be an, al an analog for Queen Esther in this crisis, other than Christ returning, I mean. Uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, 
class eight a little bit more. How much do I have? You know, let's let's. Where's the let's furnace up here? I'm gonna cook my food again. Actually, I have a, ton, I have a good number of a uh, good amount of cobble as well. So I'll probably get on to that. Uh, many of the coof restrictions weren't legislated, but were effectively decrees. Either way, it is possible for bad laws and bad decrees exist. Oh, come! Where the heck is that? There you are. Faraday. I hate it when they spawn out of nowhere. That almost killed me. Wait, another iron sword. Where did that come from? Did I make an iron, another iron sword? I do not think I did. Interesting. Okay. I'll, I'll take that. Uh, I need more torches. And then for that, I need more wood. Oh, crap. Yep. Meant to be cooking in here. Uh, Jake Humphrey, Mayor of the Kufi, yeah. Yeah, here in NC, our government unilaterally declared things are no back from the state. Legislator. Corcini says you made two swords. Did I? Damn, that was a waste. I could have made some iron boots. Oh, darn it. Oh, well. Oh, I still got some iron here, so I guess I can cook that. Alright, lovely. Absolutely lovely. All right, let's get some more wood. Or you know what? Even better, let's let's build a little bit more of the church. Oh man! But yeah, another thing these Christian status will say with the example that you brought up, Jake, of the uh, the apostles preaching despite what the state said, they'll give the excuse: "Oh, look, we we need to the we do need to re to to not obey if they tell us to sin." And that's it. They're the only time in their, in their paradigm when resistance is permitted. It's not even resistance. It's simply not obeying if they tell us to directly sin. But so long as an action that they command of us or command us not to do, as long as it's technically in the immediate act not a sin, then it's okay. Sorry. Then it's okay. So they'll love to play on technicalities as the Western mindset loves to do. They'll play on technicalities and they'll say, oh, look, not gathering the specific act of not gathering on a certain Sunday uh, in a certain building with certain people, blah, blah, blah. That's not a sin, which is technically true. But of course, it's a lie by omission because the sin, there is actually a sin involved. And that is foregoing the meeting of the body because you fear or even enthusiastically obey the state. That is a sin. And they can't get around that um, because they are ultimately rendering unto God. And that is the key thing to remember here. They are rendering unto Caesar what is God's. They love to bring up that passage along with along with Romans 13. Render unto Caesar, render unto Caesar. They'll never, ever quote to you the second half of that statement. What is Caesar's? Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Which entails, along with the second half, the, the other part where it says render unto God what is God's that there are things that are not Caesar's and thus that should not be rendered to him. Now, the thing I love to ask these Christian status, uh, and I, I want the opportunity more often to come, is the gathering of the Lord's body, is the worship of the Lord something that belongs to Caesar? Yes or no? And of course, they know they're, they know they're trapped when they're asked this question because if they say, yes, the worship of the Lord is something that pertains to Caesar, then uh, obviously they're going to sound like absolute straight up idolaters, which really they, they ultimately are in a very indirect way, um, idolaters because they fear the state and they obey the state over obeying God. Um, but it becomes much more direct if they had to give an answer on that. Um, yeah. So it isn't laws, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right. They're violating their own contract with the people. JH, the prequels are... You will not blaspheme the prequels on this stream. The, the prequels 
are peak Star Wars. Okay, I love the OG trilogy as well. I love them all. They're all fantastic. But I will not only say that the prequels are good, not only that they're great, but they are the best. Especially Episode 3, the height of Star Wars. Facts. Straight facts. I, I, um, I proclaim that from the chair of Peter. Um... Jake Humphrey, not preaching and evangelism is a sin of omission. That's right, yeah. At least, like, well, obviously, it's not like Jehovah's Witnesses where it's like, if you're not actively preaching every second of your life, you're in sin and all that. It's like, if you have the opportunity to preach, but you forego it on the grounds of what the government says, yes, 100%, that's a sin. 100%. It's going to be a nice scale church. It's going to be pretty nice, I reckon. Um, yeah, Logos, uh, Jack Ray, sounds like Marxism to make an idol of the state. Yes, 100% it is. And hello, Jack, by the way. But yeah, 100%. It is, I mean, I mean, not necessarily just Marx, it's not just Marxism, you know, there are many totalitarian systems out there. Well, fascism, for example, fascism is by its nature totalitarianism. Like in the actual, I've read some of the actual foundational writings of fascist philosophy, and it's basically like, the state is really the center point of anything, of everything. It's really the true manifestation of the people, even on a spiritual level. So the state is all. Um, so Marxism, fascism, other ideologies, um, ultimately are state worship. Uh, Logos says the prequels are okay. We're going to have to work in that opinion, buddy. They're more than okay. <laughs> Jake, Disney boned everything by cutting out Lucas. Oh, 100%. 100% there. Um, and because they're woke. They're just... Yeah, that's why they ruined... That's also why they ruined it. Um, Logos, I found some amusement in Star Wars Episode Nine. Um, <laughs> it was funny. I was actually shocked at how it was even worse in Episode Eight. So it was a fun watch that way. Uh, Jack Ray. Okay, so the prequels are great in the story, but not great on, not good in the dialogue. I mean, I would argue as well, the original trilogy, they have that very corny dialogue as well. I think at times in both trilogies, there are excellent moments of dialogue in both. But they also both share in corny uh, dialogue. So I half agree with you there. Um, yeah, Jack Ray. Yeah, Nazis and fascists did the same. It's a distilled socialism. I think it's an even more intense um, socialism, really. Because while fascist states maintain private um, private ownership, so like corporations and all that stuff, and not like workers' collectives like socialism... They are still state controlled. They, the state still has its tendrils in those private corporations to enact its ends. Um, yeah, and that's basically how um, how Germany worked in that period. As far as I'm aware. Um, yeah. JH, or acting. No, acting is solid. There's there's little, there's little errors of acting in both trilogies, but otherwise they both also have great acting. And oh man, Ewan McGregor um, and... Uh, <sighs> What's his name? Ian. Oh, the, the 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 actor for Palpatine. He was a wow. He was the best. He was just the best of it all. Um, yeah. Logos says I want an emperor based. Oh, those are pillages. Okay, that's not good. Okay. Okay. So my typical strat. What the heck? I have my shield up. What? My shield's up. My shield is up. What the heck? Okay, did you did I I I can't be the only one who saw that. My shield was up. And his The heck? Okay, now the pillagers are coming. Okay, but the iron golems are gonna defend me. So it should be okay. I'm gonna test this again. My oh, hang on, it might have been his crossbow. So the other the other crossbow shots were being blocked. But he had like an enchanted crossbow. Okay, so maybe... I'm hoping that's... I'm really hoping that's why. I am... Please God, do not make it that sh that crossbows penetrate shields now. Because that would be disastrous. Uh, Jack Ray. Prequels. Note the Jar Jar seemingly fun-loving nice character ended up bringing in the clones leading to Order 66. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Jake Humphrey. The biggest mistake in the prequels was pulling a PG-13 rating and not giving Samuel L an F-bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I am tired of these beep Sith in this beep temple. <laughs> uh, the pillager has an enchant. Yeah, I think so. Logos. Unlimited power. <laughs> oh, 
Mother the Emperor was the best in, in the in the prequels. Corcini, I really can't understand why and how Christians can truly support Marxism, leftist ideologies. They seem so man focused to me. Which it is. But um you'll be shocked at how the lengths that self proclaimed Christians are willing to go um in order to claim they're being faithful to scripture, but then they also want to support these pre made ideologies of theirs. Um they'll contort it to no end. Um yeah, some of them just end up being honest and say, I don't believe scripture is the infallible word of God. They'll just straight up deny that um, and s- in order to preserve their preferred ideologies. And uh, to them, I can say, well, at least they're more consistent. Um, they, wanna, they, they want to prioritize their man-made beliefs uh, and uh, keep a hold of them just because there's an emotional attachment. So that's what they do. They'll deny the authority of scripture. Where was the revenge? I had the... I had the little marker somewhere over here. So there's the ch- I think it was down here. Pillage has an enchantment. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the that's the world we live in right now. I guess a lot of very cringe people who call themselves Christians, but they're actually not. Yeah, I'm really happy. Yeah, I'm actually I'm actually super relieved that the connection is maintaining this level of stability the whole time. Um, yeah, because I'm using Ethernet now and it, and it works beautifully. Um, thank God for Ethernet. Ooh, let's see if there's anything in here. Oh, I've done it. Where's my, do I have any extra food? No, I don't. Damn. Okay. Um, I need to find that ravine because I have a bunch of food down there. I am, oh, hang on, hang on. I think we're here. Yep. Great. Why is the pillar not here? I had that dirt... P- Did I actually remove it? I really hope I didn't just remove it. <sighs> aye, aye, aye. Mm. And where's the... Be- I must have amnesia. I, I don't even remember where the bed is now. Ah, oh, Fantastic. Um, okay, cool. Let's get some armor. Yeah, the boys. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Perfect. Much better protection. I suspect I left the bed. I might have left the bed down there. Although I doubt it because I don't think I ever slept over there. But just in case. Just in case. And I don't have any to... That's why I went up there to get wood for torches. Uh, let's do this again. It's hard to remember these things, chat. It really is. Uh, Logos, I love the waterfall physics. Yeah, let's. I hope they never change it. I want to be able to jump from like a 100 meter drop and just negate all four damage just by landing in a puddle. Let's hope that never changes. Oh yeah, and being able to swim up a falling water. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely love it. Water just acts like an elevator in this game. Yes, it does. And let's hope they... I hope they never change it. Ah, oh, man. Okay, so I'm collecting wood. I suspect I might have um, accidentally placed the bed maybe in panic as I was running from the pillages. I've got a lava bucket. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the lava the lava bucket. Um, for those who were here last week... Uh, this good old bucket of lava we used to, uh, how do I say it? To put down the false priest <laughs> of this village. Oh man, good times. I'm enjoying the stream. I hope you, I hope you guys are enjoying this too. Um, cause I know sometimes in this game, the task can get, can get a little bit into tedium, but I do hope you guys are otherwise enjoying this stream and will be regulars. Um, since this is a whole series after all. But yeah, enjoying it or not, any uh, feedback, criticisms, whatever, do please give it to me. Yum. Um, but yeah. Hoping to keep it more regular. How much time? Uh, laudate omnes gentes. Laudate. Laudate. Sic laudate. Humanist idolaters are idolaters of ego. The whole humans are basically good is one way that leads to that. Yeah, hundred percent. I yeah, hundred percent agree with that. Um, a lot of I noticed that many debates 
on universalism, both sides agree, especially if it's a Catholic side, for example, they'll, they'll both agree that humans are basically good. And then from that premise, they'll say, therefore eternal hell bad. Um, yeah, which is simply, it's a presupposition. That's it. It's not actually based on scripture. It's a presupposition. It's not based on God's revelation. Let's get a couple more torches. But yeah, it does lead to many, many other heresies as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Works like a charm. Oh, I've got enough torches. Jake says, I'm here for the Paul. Logo says, chilling with Paul is the appeal of the series so far. Oath, oath. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad I'm, 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 glad I'm a decent chill partner. Uh, a good mate to chill with. It's almost like a pub, except you're just watching a guy play a game. <laughs> but uh, definitely the game should get more exhilarating with time. Uh, especially once we get to the nether, because the nether, since the last update, is pretty nuts. Very, very dangerous. Um, hell, may maybe even a nether survival series is in order. Let's run, so they can't shoot me, in case there's any skeletons. But yeah, I've actually... um. With the last update, when the nether was updated, it's actually crazy to survive in now. Like, you can actually... I, 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 start, I start a game and I place myself in the nether with nothing. And it's actually a real challenge to survive. Um, so it's very, very fun to play nether survival. Um, but yeah, once we get to the nether in this world, uh, that's when the danger should definitely rack up. Anything here? No. No. Oh, here. Oh, yes. Hello. That. Oh, that's a decent pocket too. But there's a lot of gravel up there, which is going to fall and kill me. So, you know what? Let's deal with that first. Good enough. All right. Uh, JH says, found you through your TikTok lady response video on homosexuality. Good job on that one. Thank you. Thank you. Still one of my crown jewel videos. Um, and that one specifically is still my most viewed video of all. Um, I think it's I think it's quite obvious. I did that's probably among my highest production value uh, value videos. Those uh, pre-made long form videos are the highest production ones, easy. Um, and hopefully, I'll be as high, if not even higher, production value for my other coming long form videos, um, even if they're not as meme. -y. Although I do have a general rule that like when I have response videos to like heretics and all that stuff, um, those will be very meme -y as well. On top of being uh, very uh, academic. So I went down there, went over there. Ah, this cave was a nothing burger, except for a few bits of iron. But uh, yeah, you know, I'm going to... Oh, hang on. I don't think I explored up there. So let us do that. Or did I? Not fully. No, I have not. Is that a skeleton? I don't know. I think I, saw, I thought I saw something up there. Oh, hello. Okay, okay. This divides off. So there should be some stuff here. The elevation's still a bit high. We're at around uh, Y40, late Y40s. So it's still a little bit high um, for the good stuff. I don't want to go too far because otherwise I'll get lost. Uh, the retconning of arson to boy is one of the funniest liberal Christian memes. <laughs> <laughs> memes of 2020 bro honestly like the, a cursory view of all ancient translations will just show how bull the uh, Leviticus is talking about boys translation is I mean I guess maybe the more academic ones might say yes it technically means male but in context it's specifically considering young boys which is like which is like, okay, maybe that's a specific situation they're responding to. But the fact is, it's drawing on a wider principle. It's drawing on the wider principle. Don't copulate with males. Simple as that. Even then, it's pure speculation when they say that was the context for the uh, for the Hebrew scriptures. You can say that for the Greek ones because homosexuality was by and large between men and boys. Um, but that's not why the Christians opposed it. Merely because, oh, it's young boys, it's pedo. It's because it was unnatural. Man and man was unnatural. Um, yeah, this is why we need to study Greek, 
Um, Jake said, Mike Winger proved you can do long form Christian content and succeeded it. You're going to do, you're going to do great. Thank you, bro. Thank you. JH, I'm self-studying Greek. Hey, good on you. Big, big mad respect to that. It's very tough. Um, in my last stream, actually, JH, if you get a chance to watch that, I don't know, maybe you, maybe you did see it. I don't know, but I actually recommended in the live chat, a bunch of very helpful resources for learning, uh, ancient Greek. Um, and in particular, it focuses on learning it as a natural language and not merely through grammar translation. So, um, if you can get a chance to look at those, do do that. Um, I don't know if I'll repeat it because, uh, my voice is really tired and I've repeated those resources a lot to multiple people. But yeah, what's the time? 101. I might, um, I might, I might call this stream soon, but, um, before I do that, I'm going to actually build a little bit more of the church. In fact, you know, I might even build a fat, uh, Celtic cross to kind of, to kind of top it off because I'm aiming for these streams to go for around, around two hours. Maybe I'll have an occasion where I go for even longer. Um, but either way, two hours is the goal. Jake says we opposed it because it was gay. <laughs> oath, big oath. Uh, Caution, I think you're signing up a niche Christian YouTube channel. I have no idea what I talk about, but that I do is always seem fun to me. If you're going to do anything, well, first you've got to understand why do you want to make a channel? Why do you want to make content? What's so appealing about me? What can I offer that other people aren't doing? Or how can I do it in a better way than others? You know? So you've got to determine, well, why do I even want to do it? Or am I just doing it for the novelty? And if you're just doing it for the novelty, then you really don't want to do it because it'll be a pain and you won't like it and you will eventually stop. But if you genuinely think, hey, here's something I can contribute, then hey, good stuff. You just got to make sure you know what your mission is. What what am I doing here? Uh, coal, copper, I think the exit was over here somewhere. Yes. I think the exit was here. Do I have any more coal and toy? No. Well, I need to get to the surface. Uh, the other court, the other pool. Let's use, let's use inhospitable as a code word for the act of arsenokoites. <laughs> Corchini, you missed some iron. Where? Oh, where? Let's backtrack. Ah, uh, uh, stuff it. I'll, 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 I'll find it next time. Okay, yep, here's the exit. Awesome. I'll find that iron next time. And I'll probably find another spot to mine so I can go deeper and so on and so forth. Get more stuff. But yeah, let's head to the surface and let's build up that church a bit before I uh, call it. And I'll probably call the game, but I'll, I'll stick around just a little bit and maybe give like that very brief, uh, li uh, very brief uh, showing of my of my place. Uh, Logos says San Francisco has inhospitable parades every year. So I see. Oh, bro, Sydney as well. Um, where I am, Sydney, Australia, we have those every year too. Oh crap! I don't have a bed here. And it's night. Stuff it. Stuff it. Let's do it. I can run. I've started watching Alpha with Angela, which teaches Greek through your comprehensible input. Perfect, bro. That's good. That's very good. Comprehensible input is very top stuff. Learning the language as it actually is and not simply knowing how to memorize tables. Because I genuinely believe grammar translation is actually a detriment to your, to your learning. And there are enemies everywhere. Oh, I've got to run. Comprehensible input channels is the future of language education. 100% agree. 100%. I can barely see, but that's okay. Speed run strats. These are the speed strats, boys. Eh, 
And there's a creeper right in front of my house. Lovely. Lovely. Oh, there's one right there. Oh, crap. There's two of them. Why isn't the golem taking them out? Actually, you know what? Oh, for... Please tell me my respawn point. Oh, thank God. Okay, I'm just at the church. Far out. That was very close. To, so that's where the bed was. Oh my gosh. That was supposed to block the damage from the creeper. I guess the shield didn't go up in time. Whatever. Whatever. Hey, the resurrection is real. And I'm back. <laughs> Let's just hope it didn't destroy everything of mine. Okay. For the most part, I think we're fine. Okay, cool. Got both swords. Pickaxes, all that. All that jazz. Alright, we're good. We're sweet. We're back. <laughs> Rip, I certainly was. I had three years of Latin from junior high to high school. It helped me understand English grammar more. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I still remember vividly my very first uh, Greek class in Bible college. And it was basically the most advanced English class I ever took. It was like an entire English course in, in one or two classes. Um, okay, yep, I slept. I'm going to store some stuff. food with me. Do I have any coal? Cool. Alright. Let's put some finishing touches on this church. <coughs> I mean, not finishing touches, but I mean, finishing for today's construction. Now, I'm not going to lie, this is definitely not the best spot, uh, this place. It's very high, it's high, high altitude, very bare with respect to the resources around it. Um, but hey, it's a pilot series and we can still make do, so yay. I'm um, guessing his apathy comes from the employees we practice for a long time. Uh, English is a half language learning any uh, is half Latin and learning any second language forces you to learn grammar 100% true 100% true that is um, I reckon you know what yeah I think we can do that why not I reckon I'll build I reckon I'll just build a, a Celtic cross like just it's going to be temporary but I'm going to build like a Celtic cross just right here just to kind of top off this episode Okay, so like that, and then I think, there we go, so one, two, three, yep, yeah. two, three, one, two, three, awesome, hang on, pickaxes, there we go. All leaving languages are impure, TBH. Yeah, yeah, to a degree they all are. Uh, it's not big enough. Definitely not big enough for a... Oh. No, it needs to go one more out. Oh, but it's going to touch the walls now. Ah, darn it. I kind of I kind of stuffed it. I mean... Oh, that'll make do for now. Hang on. We need circular blocks in Minecraft. That is the most cursed statement ever. That works for now. I reckon that's a... Oh, no, I could use staircase blocks. It'll actually... Staircase blocks will actually round out these uh, these bits, so it'll actually make it more circular. 
Um, but that's a start. That's just uh, this is just a placeholder for uh, for later. Although now now that I think about it, it kind of looks more like the the cross of the cross of the Holy Sepulchre. <laughs> just 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 imagine that this is a ring. All right, just imagine that this is a, a circular ring. It does look like the Jerusalem cross. Yes. Um, you know, I can actually no, I can make staircases right now. Yeah, yeah, I can easily do that. There we are. There we go. Uh, only need four. Perfect. There we go. Jack Ray, do you watch... Jack Ray says, do you watch Anthony Rogers' channel? Not regularly, but I have seen his content and he's very good. Yeah, that's a bit more like it. I mean, it's 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 cubicle, sure, but you can tell it's, a, it's more of a ring and not like the Holy Sepulchre. Yeah, it's more distinguishable. Um, but yeah, I do, I do occasionally... Um, I have occasionally watched his material, especially... His debate with um, that uni that Unitarian uh, scholar uh, Dale Tuggy, he trounced him absolutely trounced him, and it was quite a beautiful thing to watch. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I don't watch him much. But he is awesome, really awesome. Uh, maybe you'd have to make the cross out in other materials. This is just a placeholder for now. Um, I'm just going to have it in here while the interior isn't really being done, because uh, right now I'm going to be focusing. Pretty much entirely on the exterior. Um, but before next episode, next week, I'll be doing a bit more... I'll, just do, I'll do a little bit more investigation onto those pictures of Celtic churches that I, I use for reference. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, far out. So that has been this episode of Upon This Block this week. I think it went rather well. And I'm really thankful all you people here have uh, come to watch. Very, really, thank you for coming along. I won't call it just yet. I'll um, I'll quit the game. But now, bang, camera only. Hello, now you see my face in pure HD. But um, yeah, thank you again. Thank you for watching. It's really, really good. I'm really hoping to see you guys uh, regularly here. Um, yeah, weekly. This is a week. This is remember. This is a weekly thing. If you saw the uh, uh, the title screen, it's uh, every normally this week was an exception because there was a debate I was moderating. But otherwise, every week it's on every week uh, nine a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time and seven p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, so United States. So that's the timing. It's the best of both worlds. It allows me to get all as many people as possible from the United States and, of course, in my own home country. Um, but yeah. I think it was actually uh, quite a quite a quite a good episode today. Even if it was a little bit more a little bit more grindy than I wanted it to be, but uh, still progress is made on the church. I got some extra resources uh, for myself so that I can traverse caves a little bit better. But uh, yeah, I think um, I wasn't able to get to the Bibles unfortunately. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna start planning that around because I'm gonna find how you can um, put hyperlinks into Minecraft books because I think you actually can. And if I can do that, that means I can put a hyperlink into uh, bi into like actual online Bibles, like Bible Hub, which will then allow us to debate what Bible versions we're going to give to these villages. So that's going to be nice and excellent. Um, but yeah, I like in this chat and the thing, uh, liking this chat about the uh, medieval Latin and all that stuff. I mean, I'm just I'm just for myself, honestly, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to get epic classical, bro. But um, now before we finish, <clears throat> excuse me, got some stuff in my throat. I am going to show you some stuff of mine. Uh, see, let me grab it. Hang on. One sec. Okay. So, first thing to show is my nice little icon of Christ. So, right here, it's a nice little thing on a stand. Got the Lord's Prayer in Greek. It's a very nice, very, very beautiful display, um, what I have. I got it from a, as I mentioned, I got it from a Greek store 
um, near me. Although unfortunately, it had like it had like this entire table of uh, icons, like just packed to the brim with icons of various figures and all that. And I look at all those icons that aren't of Christ. And I'm like, yeah, no, nah, no, that's not, no, nah, no way. But then I see this one of Christ. I'm like, oh, I really want this. I really, really want this. Um, it was, it's a really nice one. Now, another really interesting one I have, um, one of my Catholic friends, uh, he gave me this for my 21st birthday last year. Last year? Yeah, last year. Uh, yes, that was last year. Uh, he gave me this for my 21st birthday. Um, a proper thurible, uh, incense burner. So just open up the lid. There's still a little bit of, there's a burned coal in there. Um, I can still use it actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, just drop the, uh, drop the incense into it and uh, let it go. It's very, it's very, very nice. I, I do enjoy it. Um, the smell of incense is quite beautiful. Um, I'm still trying to, I'm trying to make sure that the smoke detectors in my house don't go off in it because otherwise I, I want to eventually like, do some nice uh, incense for the, uh, for the, um, whatchamacallit, during my prayer time. That'll be very nice, very nice and helpful. Logos Logistics, Paterimon. Oh, you use that. Oh, hang on, camera, readjust. Hello, thank you. Use that more, um, that more later Greek pronunciation. I like to use the reconstruct, reconstructed Koine pronunciation, which still pronounces eta as e. So pater emon or hemon, if you do the h. But uh, yeah, Lord's Prayer. I've basically got that burned in my mind. The Lord's Prayer in Greek. I do it basically every every day in my morning prayer. So to go along with it, for those wanting to learn Greek, want to pay attention. Pateremon o en tu suranius hagias teto to anamasu el teto e vasiliusu yene teto to telemasu o sin urano ke pitais geis to anartonemon to nepiusion dosi min semron ke afis min tau felema tamon os ke mi safia men tu so felete semon ke meis en enkes mas ispiras mon arau semas aputu poneru and it doesn't include it in this version but uh, some other versions of including the Matthew version say hoti suestin e vasilia ke dunimis ke doxa is tu seonas Amen. Yeah, Lord's Prayer in Greek. Love it. Um, next, I'm going to be drilling that in Latin because, of course, Latin is my thing I'm doing now. But, uh, yeah, yeah, quite some beautiful stuff. And uh, I think now uh, it's a little bit... Uh, stop. The room's, the, the room's a little bit messy, but um, I think I'll uh, I'll turn this... I'll actually turn my camera around. I'll show, I'll show you my library setup a little bit. So, right here. This is my personal library right here. Um, mostly organized, but still got some books to pack up to properly organize, but that's basically my setup. Um, what I've got right now, I've got some very nice stuff here. I'm hoping uh, you guys can recognize some of the very, very nice things I've got. Um, I'll just give like this little brief, uh, this, this shelf right here in right here in the center, that's my Bible shelf. So all my Bibles, uh, pretty much entirely in Greek or in Hebrew. Um, they're all over there. So my Hebrew Old Testaments, my Greek New Testaments and my Septuagints, um, but also I've got the NET English Bible over there because it's got that insane um, amount of uh, you know, notes on translation, manuscripts and all that stuff. And uh, Jake, yes, that is Keener's, that is Craig Keener's full commentary on Acts, all four volumes, over 4,500 pages. And last time I remember going for around $300 brand new. And I found them all for free, basically in brand new condition. Um, so that was one of the greatest blessings ever. Um, yeah. And uh, this this shelf in particular with my Bibles, that's mainly my primary sources shelf. So like ancient stuff and all that. Very, very good. Very, I love this stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's, uh, that's 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 more or less the... the over oh yes, this shelf over here. Um, languages. So it'll include my lexicons, my grammars and uh, dictionaries and stuff like that. Uh, it's still a bit unorganized as you can see. It's also got some flashcards. But uh, yeah, that's, that's basically that commentaries and uh, theology for this shelf. Um, so if you look all the way down there, if you look closer, you can see Logos Rising uh, by E. Michael Jones. And I'm sure any based authors and Catholics watching will definitely know who E. Michael Jones was is. And uh, even better, I got myself a signed edition. Um, so actually, you know what? I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull it up right now. Just give me one second. Hard copies of these books will be worth their weight in gold. 100%. Hard, I always want to go hard copy whenever I can. Um, even just if, And even if I can't find like a hard, hard copy, I'll still go paperback. I just prefer that over digital all the time. Um, 
in the event of a major grid down event. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. That is a genuine consideration. That's why I want to get hard copies for everything that I can. But yeah, Logos Rising by E. Michael Jones. For those who uh, I'm hope I'm hoping some of the uh, the people who well, know about him are here because uh, I want to see you obsess over my signed edition from the pen and hand of E. Michael Jones himself. Absolutely legendary. One of my more prized ones. And I've read through I've read through a good um, good chunk of this, and it's actually quite it's it's quite good. It is really quite good. I enjoy it. Not perfect. Um, a bit. Uh, I personally, how would I say it? Not the biggest fan of how he he relies on a very small number of secondary sources for his for his historical stuff. But other than that, his takes are pretty pretty cool um, to a large degree. And uh, Corsini says reading digital is such a pain for some reason. Hundred percent, hundred percent, it is. It's not. It's not the same. Uh, yeah, you, you, it's difficult to explain, but it's just really really hard. Jake says I have one bookshelf myself. Paul's stuff makes me jealous. <laughs> Hey, do what I do. Invest in a study room. Invest in a dedicated study room and then just get a bunch of shelves in there. Um, yeah, make it epic. But uh, yeah, I think I am going to call it for now. I have been basically nonstop uh, in busy content work since... Uh, how long ago now? Five, five, over four hours ago. But uh, yeah, I think this was great. I think this was another excellent episode of Upon This Block. And I thank you all for tuning in. It was very, very nice, very fun. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much that. I uh, yeah, I wish you guys the, I wish you guys all the best. And I'll see, I'll see you all next week. Do come in next week. Set reminders if you haven't already. Uh, do turn on notifications so that you can actually see my content when it comes up. And uh, do share me with your other Christian friends and family and all that so you can get more of this content, not just this stream, but also other excellent content I have coming up, including my Christendom Weekly, which is going to be a little bit even a little bit better quality uh, next week. But also with my long form videos, in particular, my one on the proper role of the state according to Holy Scripture. So that one is going to be especially pertinent and very useful for you all out there. Uh, also, um, just for... Just for a heads up, so that I can, uh, I can, <laughs> I can. Uh, I'm not going to be asking for shekels right now, but I do intend at some point um, to start up my Patreon, so that I can actually make an income from all this content. Because I don't have a job right now, and I likely won't for a while because uh, of the state government's uh, tyranny on how to do with teachers. But even when I do finally get teaching work, I do want to have a uh, side income through my content, so that I can make it nice and high quality, devote a lot of time to it. Um, but yeah, so I do intend to start a Patreon soon and uh, I think I'll release, I'll release details on my ideas for tiers soon so that people can have a look, see if they're, uh, see if they think it's pretty good. Although of course the thing with Patreon, you got to understand is that it's primarily a donation. You're not buying a service from me. So rewards for tiers are, well, they're, 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 they're a form of thank you. It's not like you're paying for those tiers. You're, you, you would be voluntarily donating, um, uh, in order to well just uh, help me have a have an income on the online while I make this content, so yeah I'll just uh, I'll I'll say that and uh, yeah if you well yeah I just I I can hope I can get some contributors at some point God willing and uh, I don't want to labor on that point uh, I do not want to sound like uh, Mister Shekelberg for a while so I'll, I'll I won't belabor that point for more but uh, anyway thank you all for coming on and uh, I will see you all next week. God bless you. Have a good day or evening. Uh, one second. Whoops.